I am born of rivers. Some are born of fire, some of water, some of earth, some of air. I am born of water. I am a woman of rivers, conceived at Mission Gage during the great flood of 48, born a water carrier. I am a woman of rivers, gone down now to the sea. The mighty rivers of my homes, rivers welling every spring to burst the land open Delta created by the silt washing down from the interior, the finest farmland in the world. Fish fighting upstream to spawn, roar of breakup, tumult of spring, steady song of September. Don't waste water, the central teaching of my mother, scorned for turning a tap on to run cold rebuked for rinsing peeled vegetables one at a time before placing them in an inch of water for steaming, shared bath water with five siblings, taught to place a plug in the sink, turning on the hot water, its first cold mixing with the hot until it was just enough, just enough, no more, without water, we'd be nothing. My brothers and sisters gathered at the lake, taken from our home at a bewildering early hour, shushed not to wake your mother. In the dawn, as the sun touched the water, turning it golden from green, smoke is rising. Smoke? My father tells me it is the mist rising to greet the sun, tells me that's all there is. It's all here, rising to the sun, mixing with the clouds, falling as rain. All there's ever been. All there ever will be. All here. I am terrified. This lake, so huge and permanent, contains all there is? In the dawn, while my mother began her lonely labor with her last child, I walked into the lake, feeling the cold on my feet, the gold of the water changing the color of my skin, the mist disappearing as I approach. I am walking through water, rising to greet the sun. And you were part of it. Your sweat, your tears, he leans close your pee. Going round and round, your blood is mostly water. You are mostly water. That's been through an elephant 1,000 years ago. Hip deep in water, green below, gold above, mist rising to touch the sun. In the silence of the lake, I hear her. I walk into dawn depths, dive, swim underwater into the deepening green, listening. She is talking to me. I rise from a spring, fill this immense bowl, flow into the Fraser, descend to the sea. What is done to me is done to all. My name is Ellen Leslie, and I've been working in a kind of a coordinating role with water stewardship for the last few years. When I came to Hornby Island, I had come from the city, and I was very used to turning on the tap and having water come out and not thinking about it very much. I knew nothing about wells. I knew nothing about pumps, deep water pumps. I knew nothing about, uh, about it at all. Um, I was really actually quite delighted because I'd been looking for a way to 
get involved in the community and a way to get involved in the ecology and conservation on the island. A couple of local residents got together and, and just said they were beginning to be very concerned about water. There was more development on the island and it seemed like things were getting drier. They started thinking of ways that they could help people to learn about things like wells and pumps and, and, and then septic fields as well. People were having a difficult time having their water tested. And for many years, they handed out um, collection bottles and one of the members delightful, delightful woman would um, take her Volkswagen van off island and take these samples into town um, and have, have them tested and bring back the results. They basically followed their inclination, what they knew they needed, they knew that others would be interested in hearing about as well. So over the years they had septic workshops, they had well workshops, they had um, waterborne illness workshops. They also uh, got involved in doing some really meaningful citizen science. So they got themselves trained to collect samples correctly and came back, trained a, up a whole bunch of other people and they actually collected 600 water samples on the island and did up a report on that that was significant. There's a history of awareness, education, and also research. It really is citizen involvement, and actually I think at this point it, it's a model for others, for other communities of, of what a water stewardship group can do. I call it an organization, it, was a, it really is a loosely affiliated, committed group of people um, who, as they worked along, the challenges were many. Um, having people, other people care, certainly finding people who were able to assist, um, finding fundraising in order to be able to do some of the things they wanted to do um, so badly. You know, as, as organizations move along, they go through different phases and, and water stewardship came to the place where they didn't have the kind of resources. They really needed a kick. And that came along in the form of the local economic group, um, High Seek, it's called on Hornby. My name is Darren Bond. I got involved with water stewardship in 2016. Prior to that, I was with the local economic group, HiSeq, and we were putting together what we called an economic action plan to look at the priorities of the community. And three basic themes came up for the whole economic action plan. Growth, most people wanted some economic growth, but they didn't want to do it at the expense of the environment so a conservation-based economy was key. And thirdly, the whole creativity of the island, the artistic sensibility was paramount. So those three things, growth, the environment, and the arts became three fundamental pieces. Because a lot of the people there depended on tourists coming to the island, um, they identified that water was vitally important to them as well. People were concerned that the island hadn't prepared itself for its water requirements, both in the short term and the long term. And it's not just for the humans, but it's also for the ecosystem, for the plants and the animals that also share this space. There's four places that you can get water, from the sky, from the ground, the groundwater, from reusing water that you had used for something else, or you can purchase it either locally or, or offshore. We came up with some categories. Some things would just be around general awareness and education of, of water and conservation. 
A second would be around individual action. What are the things that we can all do to conserve water or to protect the quality of the water? A third area would be around community infrastructure. People wouldn't have to put in their own uh, deep wells. They wouldn't have to use cisterns. You could just transport it around with pipes. But obviously some things are very expensive and some things just aren't that doable. As people are building new homes or add-ons to ensure that they're incorporating things such as rainwater collection. Uh, a final area would be around regulation, around short-term vacation rentals or just homeowners in general. And finally, a lot of need for ongoing research. So what is the geology of the island? What is the hydrogeology of the island? How much precipitation are we getting? And what does that mean in terms of ensuring quantity of water? Hello, my name is Dr. John Cox. I'm a geologist who lives on Hornby and um, I'm a member of Hornby Water Stewardship. And we're here today to, to, to look into groundwater and we're actually going to see the location of groundwater within the ground and we're going to do that down at the beach now. Come with me. So, where does the fresh drinkable water come from that is so essential to life on Hornby? That's a fairly easy answer. Um, in the winter we get lots of rainfall here and uh, over a metre of rain falls on our, our island. Now, what happens to that water once it lands on, on the island? And some of it um, goes into streams and runs off into the ocean. Some of it is taken up by plants and trees. Some of it evaporates um, straight back into the atmosphere. But fortunately for those of us who have wells on Hornby, some of that water um, sinks down into the ground. It sinks through the soil and it sinks into the solid rocks um, beneath the soil. These rocks have, have fractures and cracks and the water sinks through those and slowly, um, by gravity, um, goes lower into the rocks and is ultimately accessible by, by wells on your property. So here we can see in the outcrop um, that we're stood by um, some of these fractures that contain the water. Um, the rock here is a, a fractured shale and um, in the rocks here um, the fractures are clearly visible in this shale layer um, but these ones don't contain water. In the, in the lower layer we've got a very very similar rock that's fractured um, but water, groundwater is seeping out of these cracks um, allowing for the, the growth of the algae which give the green coloration in the rocks. So there's a nice example in the cliff outcrop here of fractures within the sandstone. Here's a, a fracture in the, in the sandstone which could be water producing when buried deep underground. Often though not at the same rates as the multiple fractures that we see in the shales below. So Hornby has two types of, of water wells. Um, the first type are, are drilled wells um, which go down on average uh, approximately 100 feet. These drilled wells drill through solid rock as we see here and are hoping to find the sort of water bearing fractures that we see in the, the, the outcrop here. The second type of well is a shallow or dug well and these wells typically go down about 20 feet and penetrate and hope to find water in the sand and gravel deposits left behind at the end of the last ice age. We're going to walk along the beach to see a, an outcrop that, that gives evidence and shows you an example of this type of deposit. What we're here to just to see is that the, um, you know, this material in here is just loose sand and gravel. And um, this is the material left behind um, at the end of the last ice age. Um, it varies in thickness. Some, it can be as deep as, as 50, 60 feet thick on certain parts of the island. So the, the cliffs behind us here show us the, the sort of material which could be um, hosting groundwater in a shallow or dug well. We have about 10 feet of, of glacial sediment which um, was left behind at the end of the ice age around 10,000 years ago. Um, this sediment can act like a, a beaker to hold water um, which falls in the, in the winter and, and produces the, the second type of, of Hornby well, the dug well or the, or the shallow well as a potential source of groundwater. We have seen with the observation well at the top of Sandpiper 
that some of the groundwater levels in that deep well is below the 20 year lowest reading. So that is concerning. So when some people think that there isn't a water problem, we think, well, there's reason enough for concern if water is getting that low. Home groundwater is generally good to drink. However, natural processes um, can cause a sulfur smell to develop and um, iron staining to occur and salinity to increase by um, something called saltwater intrusion. People are very concerned about water. They might not think about it until there isn't any, but even when there is water, people are concerned about coliform and worse, E. coli. So one of the things that came up in the water plan was a great enthusiasm if water could just be tested on island. And so we've gotten some funding. We are setting up space at the Spark and hopefully we'll be able to make that available to residents and others to, to be able to once, twice, quarterly check the water quality. I think there are two key things to remember reduce demand for water and increase storage of water. Whether that's using xeriscape landscaping, methods to reduce the amount of water you're using in the home and the business, and possibly water gauges to measure how much water you're actually using in your house. In terms of um, increased storage, I think collecting water from rooftops is absolutely the key during the winter months to supplement the water which is becoming short in the summer months. And because water doesn't care about boundaries, it just flows. So what you do affects your neighbor, what you do collectively affects everyone. So it's, it's a shared responsibility. So we wanna make it as easy as possible for people to be able to implement some of these solutions, both for their family and for their neighbors and for the whole community and the island, humans, animals, flora and fauna. You know, we know absolutely that water is life and there would be no community here on the island. Uh, there would be no us without water. So it's, it's vitally important 